The Hisense C1 is a 4K UHD laser projector. It has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 and it can create an image from 65 inches all the way to 300 inches. Some of the standout features in my opinion include Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos support, plus it has a lot of picture controls to allow you to really dial the picture in if you're into calibrating. It includes a 20 point white balance scale, laser luminance, color gamut, and gamma controls. It retails for $1,999 as I record this video. What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the home theater hobbyist. And I wanna to talk to you today about the Hisense C1 4K projector. And I have to say, this is my first time reviewing a Hisense product and I am really impressed by what we get with this particular projector. First things first, build quality and looks. When I took this out of the box, I was really impressed just how it looks. Uh, this is considered sort of a lifestyle projector, which means that you can kind of put it in a lot of different places and it looks pretty good. And it looks pretty good. <laughs> That's what I like so much about it. Uh, this outer frame right here is some metal and it's got a brush surface finish up top. So that looks nice and premium. Up front, this is plastic, but it looks like metal because they've given us that sort of brush look with the rings coming off of the lens and over here that's a little bit offset. And then you've got these uh, basically vertical lines here that I think allow for cooling. But right here up front, I think it looks really good. But that continues around back because on the back of the projector, you've got this plastic plate right here. And again, it's got a brush surface look right here. And I just think it looks really, really good. And so I have to give it to Hisense. They've done a great job with just giving us a projector that kind of fits anywhere in your room. You can put it on a table like this, project it on your wall, and people are like, okay, that's a pretty cool projector, you know, just because it looks so good. But while we're back here, we've got all of the connections back here, including two HDMI ports, including one with enhanced audio return channel. There's a digital out, there's an ethernet jack, there's an audio out, there's a digital audio out. There's also a couple of USB ports back there along with the main power connection. So continuing with looks for just a second, on each one of the sides, you have holes or perforations, which really allows the air to flow through because you've got two fans over here and air flows across here. And I'm gonna talk about fan noise in a minute, but they've also included speakers, a speaker on this side down here and a speaker on the other side over here. These are JBL speakers and they output about 20 or they have about 20 watts worth of power and they actually do a good job giving you a nice clean, clear sound for a projector. And I'm also gonna talk about that in a few minutes, but I just kind of wanted you to see just how this looks. The C1 has several different buttons up top, including a power button, which is really a multifunction button, a pause play button, and volume control. So you can just turn the volume up if you want, and you can pause the content if you have CEC control enabled. But like I said, the power button is multifunction, so you can hit it once and it brings up a menu, and then you just select whatever you want, including volume controls. So now you can actually change the volume with just that, or you can turn it off by just leaving it there and it will shut off. All right, let's talk about this remote for a second because this is the input device that you're actually going to be using. There's a remote sensor up front and one on the back as well. So you can just generally point it in the direction and it will work. Now, a couple things about this remote. First thing that I personally like that probably doesn't really matter to most people is the fact that it has a flat bottom so I can sit on the table and not worry about it falling off. That's just me personally. But it has a power button up here along with an input button there. And next to that, it's got a little bit of braille. So if you can read braille or feel braille, you can actually feel what the power, you know, where the power button is. And I think that's actually kind of a, a cool little feature that I don't normally see on remotes. So just something I thought I'd mention. It's got all the major buttons down here, including some quick action buttons for, you know, your different content like Netflix, Prime Video on the uh, Vidya, um, or Vita, maybe Vita operating system that's on there. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute as well. But one thing that I like about this projector is it has HDMI CEC control or consumer electronics control built in. So if you have other sources like your Amazon Fire TV Cube and your Panasonic 4K USD player plugged in via 
HDMI to this box, you can control them with this one remote. So you can play pause, you can skip forward, you can skip back, you can use the directional arrows and the OK button right here in the middle to actually select your content and do what you want to do all with just using this one remote. Now, HDMI CEC control is not anything new, but you know, sometimes it can be a little bit flaky. Well, when using this remote and this projector with everything on, I didn't have any issues driving either one of these boxes. One thing about this lifestyle projector is not only does it look good, but Hisense gives us several different ways to mount this projector. In the box, you get a pair of rubber feet so you can just sit it on a tabletop and project onto your wall or preferably a screen because that's going to give you the best image quality. But you can also unscrew those particular feet and then turn it upside down and use a ceiling mount to mount it to your ceiling but they also give us a little quarter 20 hole in the center of this projector, allowing us to use a tripod like I have here. But I do want to warn you, this projector weighs 10 pounds. So you wanna make sure that your tripod can actually support 10 pounds for this projector. It's you know somewhat expensive and you don't wanna be using your little travel uh, tripod thinking it's gonna hold and it just tips it over and you know that's sort of the end. So make sure that you use a tripod if you're going to that can support 10 pounds. Before we talk about audio and video performance, I want to give a shout out to the team over at projectorscreen.com. They sent me this C1 for review and I have to tell them thank you because I like this projector. It's really nice. Unfortunately, I have to send it back, but hey, that's life. Uh, but if you have questions about projector screens, projectors, AVRs, whatever it is, use those links in the description below so you can find out more about their products and contact them with all of your questions. So what did you think of that audio sample? Drop your comment in the comment section below. Personally, I'm impressed by just how good these speakers sound. Since they're on both sides, you get nice stereo separation. This says it'll do Dolby Atmos and it kind of gives you that. But again, it's a projector. It'll probably be sitting on a tabletop or behind you or something like that. So using enhanced audio return channel or audio return channel with your main setup will give you a much better experience than these speakers on this projector. But if you don't want to use that or if you're in a pinch, these speakers will definitely work because you got a nice smooth and clean mid-range and high-end and you get decent bass performance. So I am impressed by just how this sounds. But let's talk about fan noise for a second because I recently reviewed a budget projector, 4K projector, and it actually had a bit of fan noise. And quite frankly, fan noise is not a new thing in projectors. I mean, if you know anything about lamp-based projectors, they always have fan noise. Well, I am happy to say that this projector really doesn't have a whole lot of fan noise. You can hear the fans, but they don't really bother anything. I mean, you turn the volume above three on this thing and you don't even hear the fans at all because they are so quiet. So I'm going to turn this on. That's why I've moved my mic down so it's a little bit closer so you can actually hear it when it's running. And I've kind of pointed it away a little bit from the camera so it doesn't blind you when I turn it on. But this is how this room sounds right now. Okay, now I'm going to turn the projector on so you can hear the fans kick on and they're going to ramp up and then they're going to come down. That's it. It's on. It's got the Hisense um, logo over there on the wall just because, you know, it's pointed in that direction. But it's on. That's just how quiet it is when the fans are running. And I've run it for hours like this. OK. <laughs> and basically, you don't really hear anything. I mean, you hear it, but you don't hear anything at the same time. All right, let's talk about the video performance of this projector. And I have to say, I am impressed in a lot of ways with this. And I want to start with the OS, Vito, or maybe it's Vita. I'm not really sure which one to pronounce it, but this was my first experience. And I have to say, 
wow, I was really impressed because it is fast, it is fluid, and I would say it's very well featured. And what I mean by that is the app support. I was surprised to see just how many apps were supported on this platform. I'm talking Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV+, Plus, Disney+, Plus, YouTube, YouTube Kids, Peacock, all of these different apps were on this particular platform. And I just didn't expect it because honestly, this is not a operating system that I'm familiar with. Now, I did notice that it does not support YouTube TV. That is my primary TV provider, but it does have a browser. So I was able to go in, type YouTube TV in there and find it and sign in and actually watch content, which I was impressed by because the browser is also fully featured in that it looks like a normal browser. So like I said, this is really fully featured and I was just surprised and impressed because I wasn't familiar with this particular operating system. Now, a lot of projectors like this use an Android based operating system. And I don't think this is Android based. I think this is something else that Hisense has done. And I think it's better than Android because it's even faster and more fluid as you move through the apps with your remote. It's just very, very responsive. So I'm left very impressed with the Vita operating system. And quite frankly, you don't need something like an Amazon Fire TV Cube connected to this because the Vita works so well. Since this is a lifestyle projector, it's supposed to be easy to set up and easy to use. You don't have to go through and manually focus it and do all the keystone correction and stuff like that. It does it by itself. And I have to say, it's actually really good. And why I say that? Because let's say you have a screen and it is pointed right where you are on the camera, but the projector itself is at an angle like this. Well, you can just turn it on it will find the screen and it will align itself to the borders of your screen and it works. I was impressed by it because I had it set up just like this and it was able to find the screen and set itself up. But if it's not perfectly aligned, it does have a manual mode. So you can go in there and you can actually tweak it to really align it with your screen. It also has digital zoom built in so you can zoom in and out with the size of your screen. But honestly, I didn't have to use that at all. Another great feature of this projector is its eye protection mode. And it has a sensor up front to detect if you walk in front of the projector, it will lower the laser light and eventually turn it off if you stay there. That way you're not staring at the laser light, damaging your eyes. Now, one feature that Hisense touts is its color reproduction. They say it can do 110% of BT 2020 color map, which means that you get a lot of color volume and a lot of color saturation. But the good news is they give you a lot of different picture modes, including filmmaker mode, to dial it back in closer to what filmmakers intend. But if you're into calibration, it has a lot of calibration controls, including gamma, color gamut, laser luminance, and even a 20 point white balance scale. So you can really get in there and dial in this projector to be very accurate to movies or whatever content that you're watching. If you're into the Apple ecosystem, this projector also has Apple AirPlay and HomeKit built in so that you can AirPlay content to it from your phone or from your tablet. And it can also be on your HomeKit setup so that you can turn it on or off or whatever you need to do with HomeKit. Now, if you're a gamer, this has a game mode that it, you can either put it in yourself or you can put it in auto and it will detect it and go through game mode. I tried it, it works, it reduces the latency a bit so you can kind of play around. Now, I'm not a gamer, but I did have a fun playing around on the big screen. So this has that functionality built in. Now, that brings me on to a few of the downsides of this projector. And there are two main ones that I can think of. Number one, and I think the biggest, is there is no 3D support. So if you're into 3D movies and you're like, I love to watch 3D movies, don't buy this projector because it does not have 3D support. The second one is what I'll call uh, Rainbow Artifacts. This is a DLP based projector, but it has three laser lights. So it's not the rainbow effect that people tr traditionally think of. But what I noticed was every now and then when I would blink my eye, as my eye would open back up, I would see like a strip of, you know, red, green, blue color in different sections of the screen. And so I noticed it, it wasn't super often, but I did notice it, especially when I first started watching this projector. I think I've gotten a little bit uh, more accustomed to it, so I don't see it as much. It's not, you know, it doesn't happen as quickly, but I did notice it. So if you are a person who is susceptible to that and you don't really like that with, the, with projectors, I would definitely be mindful of it if you're thinking about purchasing that. But if that's not something that you care about, this is a really nice projector. So as you can tell, I like this projector. It's got a nice 4K image that you can get up to 300 inches diagonal, which is nice. And it's got the auto 
correction and keystoning and stuff so you really don't have to do much you can just set it up let it look pretty and do its job and it will do its job with hdr 10 with dolby vision if you're a gamer it's got the game mode built in i mean this is really nice oh yeah the speakers they sound good but it also has an enhanced audio return channel and it works so you can put it on your main system the vita operating system is snappy and fast i mean quite frankly this is a really really nice projector again i don't have any issues recommending it unless you want 3d support and you are very susceptible to any dlp rainbow type effects okay then maybe don't look at this but otherwise this is a really nice projector and I'm sad to see it go. So if you wanna pick this up or anything else, use those links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Drop your comments, your questions in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. I'll talk to you next time.